is Dr. Thompson, Essential Phoenix OBGYN. Today we're going to talk a little bit about colon cancer screening. This month of March is Colon Cancer Awareness Month, and so we want to give you a little bit of information to help you um, better take care of your health and maybe of the people you care about as well. So let's just start off by talking about why is this an issue? Why should you be concerned? Colon cancer isn't often in the news. You don't see many marches for colon cancer. However, it's usually one of the top three leading causes of cancer death for Americans. Um, so it's quite common. Uh, in 2018, there will probably be about 100,000 cases of colon cancer and about uh, 45,000 cases of rectal cancer. So this is pretty common. Fortunately, um, deaths from colon cancer are falling. So the message is getting out there and we're doing the right thing. But still, in 2018, we'll see about 50,000 deaths from this cancer. Um, so I recommend that you find out more about it. Listening to this video is a great start and that you do something about it. Um, it your lifetime risk of getting colon cancer, about one in 22 men, one in 24 women will get this cancer in their lifetime. We can decrease that number greatly by increasing the number of people who get screened. And still we have an issue in this country, about a third of people who should get screened don't. So we still have a ways to go in getting folks screened for colon cancer. Um, let's talk about why that is a little bit. Um, people are afraid of the test. Everyone's heard of colonoscopy. Someone puts a camera in your butt, oh horror. But it's actually not so horrific and it's absolutely good for you. So we'll talk about that a little bit later on. People are also worried about the prep because in order for someone to see what's going on in your rectum, you got to clean it out. And people are um, thinking back to the old days when the prep was very intensive and sort of yucky, I'll be honest. Um, fortunately, time and, and progress uh, goes on and we have better preps these days. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Another thing people get worried about are the risks. So what can happen to me if I have this test? Well, there are multiple tests to screen, and so we'll talk about um, how you can screen and, and what some of the risks are. They're not as many as you think. But first, let's talk about who should get screened. Besides everybody, <laughs> everyone over 50 should get a test for colon cancer. And when we talk about what the tests are, we'll talk about how often that testing should happen. But everybody over 50 so if you're over 50 and you haven't been screened run to your doctor and say please me can i get a test for colon cancer that would make us all happy if you know someone who's over 50 ask them have they been screened your mom your dad brother sister spouse um because everyone by age 50 should be getting screened some people though should get screened even earlier african americans like me should be screened starting at age 45 because we know, and we don't know why, but we do know that African Americans tend to have a higher rate of colon cancer. Is that genetic? Is it behavioral? Is it environmental? We don't know, but we do know that catching it early, you can either prevent a cancer if you find a precancerous lesion, or you can treat it early if you find it early. So we know that even though we don't know why African Americans get more colon cancer, we know that we can do something about it. So definitely starting at age 45, get that screening for colon cancer. But there are other groups as well who should be screened earlier. If you have a family history of colon cancer, I too fall into that group. I have a brother who had colon cancer, so regardless, if, even if I were not African American, I should get screened earlier, and I have. Um, also, um, if you have one of a few diagnoses uh, that we term inflammatory bowel disease, uh, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, maybe some other kinds of inflammatory bowel disease, you should get screened earlier because we know that folks who have those conditions have a higher risk of colon cancer. Talk to your doctor about when you should get screened. Also, some folks have families who have genetic uh, conditions. You may not have cancer yourself, you may not have a colon condition, but someone else in your family has had a cancer. Um, these cancer families, one of them that um, is common is called Lynch syndrome. Anyone in your family has Lynch syndrome or you talk to your doctor and they ask you about Lynch syndrome, you may need to get screened earlier. There's another condition called um, hereditary non-polyposis, and I forget the, what the two C's stand for, but HNPCC. Folks whose families have that disorder also should get um, early colon cancer screening. These folks have multiple polyps in their colon and we know that colon cancer can be preceded by polyps. Um, so 
those are some of the groups who should have early screening. Other people may need early screening too. Follow your doctor's instructions. So those are who should get screened. Now let's talk about what you can do for screening. There are a bunch of options, so that's good news. Um, if you're afraid of one, one the other one might, might work for you. A couple of options, you collect the specimen yourself at home. So no doctors poking or prodding you. You um, collect the specimen at home and return it to your doctor. Um, there are two types of tests that, that can be done with specimens that you return to your doctor. That does mean you have to engage with your poop. You'd be like a small child, right? But if you're comfortable doing that, and if you're more comfortable doing that, then one of those tests may be for you. Um, those tests are fecal occult blood testing, or FOBT. These are tests that have to be done annually, FOBT, and stool DNA testing. The first test looks for blood in the stool because normally we should not have blood in our bowel movement. And so that can be a signal that something else is going on. If that test is positive, you're going to need an additional test. But if it's negative, every year you can do this test and you can get out of having someone poke and prod at you. Um, the second test, the stool DNA test, actually looks for pieces of DNA that we know are associated with uh, cancers. Now, that test is not going to be perfect, but it is FDA approved um, and it can find a number of cancers without anyone poking and prodding you. So those two tests can be done at home by you, send your specimens to your doctor. Other tests you're going to need someone to do for you, and those tests involve looking inside your colon in a variety of ways. The first is called a flex sigmoidoscopy. It's a flexible camera, and it looks in the, the last part of the colon. This is an area where lots of folks can get those precancerous cells. Finding a precancerous uh, lesion there, it can be removed immediately. But if you find something, you got to go for the full test. You have to look at the full colon. But it is a shorter test. Um, it can be better tolerated because it is shorter than the longer um, look, which is called a colonoscopy. A test where a camera is put in the bottom and it looks at the entire length of the colon is a colonoscopy. Um, and for both these tests, you do need to clean the colon out. And I'll get to that in a second, the prep, the dreaded prep. Um, another version of looking at the colon is called a virtual colonoscopy. Now this one is not suitable for most people um, in that the way it's done is the um, colon is filled with air and then a CAT scan or a special kind of x-ray is used to take pictures of what the colon looks like. So you can imagine if you're taking a picture of the inside of the colon filled with air, if there's a mass, a big ball, or a marble sticking out where there shouldn't be one, then that's a signal that something is going on. Now, if something is found on a virtual colonoscopy, you still gotta go to the old fashioned, putting the camera inside and taking a look, because that's the best way to know for sure what's going on and to treat, to take a biopsy, to look at what's going on with the cells. Um, and finally, there's a test called a barium enema, where you put a thick material inside the colon, take a series of x-rays, and again, by contrast, you can see if there's a mass or a lump sticking out where it shouldn't. Again, finding something on this test means that you have to get the colonoscopy, but if it's negative, you could potentially avoid the colonoscopy. These last two, virtual colonoscopy and a barium enema, are reserved for folks who couldn't tolerate anything else and are at high enough risk that you want to get a look at that entire colon. Um, so those are the, the tests, the fecal occult blood testing, stool DNA testing, uh, uh, flex sigmoidoscopy, virtual colonoscopy, barium enema, and your good old fashioned colonoscopy, just putting a camera in. Now, everything except the two tests that you do at home, you have to prep the colon, the dreaded bowel prep. Now, I, like I mentioned, I had a colonoscopy and I too dreaded the prep, right? Back in the old days, and I stress this was back in the old days, you had to drink a gallon of liquid called Go Lightly and basically it just makes you go to the bathroom so that it can clean out your colon. Now these days, in 2018, amen for progress, there are other kinds of prep. So not everyone has to do that gallon of Go Lightly. There are still people for whom that's reserved, but that's gonna be the minority of people. There are a variety of preps and your doctor is gonna tell you the one that's right for you. I'll just tell you that the one that I did for my colonoscopy was very easy. I mean, I was just surprised at how easy it was. I got a packet of something that looked like Tang. Now I'm dating myself talking about Tang, but I had to mix it in a five ounce glass of water, this little orange drink. It tastes like Gatorade or um, any orange drink you can get from the store. 
and I drank that five ounces. Over the next six hours, I had to drink eight, no, I'm sorry, six eight ounce glasses of water. And then six hours later, I did it again. I took my little packet, made my five ounce, drank that, and then six eight ounce glasses of water. That's it. And yes, it makes you go to the bathroom a lot, but we all know how to do that, right? We're all competent in going to the bathroom. So you take the day off, you don't eat any solid food for the day that you're doing your prep. And for the vast majority of people, that's going to work well. So yes, it takes a day out of your life. No, you can't have your burgers that day. But for the benefit that you can get from doing your colon cancer screening, it is well worth it. The day of the procedure, the day of the colonoscopy or the flux sigmoidoscopy, um, you go in in the morning. It is an outpatient procedure. You have nothing to eat the night before. And for my procedure, I had anesthesia. I'm a wimp. So I had anesthesia. It, all I remember is the very lovely nurse asked me, did, she, did I want her to take my glasses? And then I remember waking up. That's it. So the procedure itself was really well tolerated. Um, everyone hears a horror story about the person who woke up during a colonoscopy. I did not, and most people do not. The risk of complications with colonoscopy is very small. Um, one in 1,000 will have a major complication. Um, so that's a very small risk, again, compared to the benefit of the test. You always want to weigh risks to benefits. So compared to the benefit of the test, the risks are very small. Now, let's say you're one of the people who's in the general population. You're age 50, going in for your colonoscopy, and it is normal. They find no polyps, no abnormalities, clear, healthy, clean you don't have to return for 10 whole years. So the screening interval for colonoscopy actually is quite reassuring. Um, unlike many other screening tests that we have that you have to do every year, every two or three years. Colonoscopy, if you're in a general population and your colonoscopy is normal, you return in 10 years. Now, those of us who have a family history or African-American, they find polyps, you may have to return on a, a more frequent schedule, but your doctor will let you know that. On the whole, I find that um, colonoscopy is well tolerated. It's pretty easy. You can do it in a day and it's nothing to be afraid of. Um, but there are other options for those of you who, no matter what I say, you're saying no way. Um, there are other options, so there's no reason not to get screened even though you don't want to get a colonoscopy. Now, before we close, I just want to address some concerns I hear a lot. I think I've covered the bowel prep. It's not as bad as you think, and for the benefit of the test, well worth it. And hey, maybe that day of not eating well will help you lose a pound or two. Many of us are always struggling with that. I don't suggest starving as a way to lose weight. That was a joke. Um, what are the risks? We talked about that. Only one in a thousand will have a major complication from colonoscopy. So it really is a well-tolerated, low-risk uh, procedure, and the benefit is uh, tremendous and well worth it. Pain during the procedure. Now, some people will do a colonoscopy awake. I have no experience of that. I am a big wuss. I don't want to be awake when someone's probing my body in that fashion. And so the center that I went to offered anesthesia. I was able to talk to the physician before my test and talk about the risks and benefits of anesthesia, the side effects of anesthesia. The agents that they use these days are really well tolerated and work really well. The vast majority of people will be comfortable during their procedure, will not wake up during their procedure, and will have minimal side effects from it. Um, you can ask your physician questions if you have concerns about anesthesia. And like I said, you can certainly do it awake if anesthesia has been a problem for you in the past or you have some special concerns. But most people will um, get anesthesia and be very comfortable during the procedure. Other questions that people ask are about downtime for the colonoscopy. Now I mentioned that if you're doing any of the imaging, colonoscopy, flex sigmoidoscopy, virtual colonoscopy, barium swallow, you do need to prep for that um, test. And so it will take some time out of your day, of your life, your work, your family, your leisure, the day before to do the prep for the colonoscopy. Um, most people are able to do a one day prep. There are some circumstances where people need to do more than that. But typically it's a day, clear liquids, no solids. You do the prep and you go in and have the exam a day after. So there's really not a whole lot of downtime. After the procedure, if you've had anesthesia, we never recommend that you do any major decision making or activities after you've had anesthesia. So really it's two days down for the exam. One day for the prep, 
one day for the exam, and then you're back to your normal activities. And you get a day of watching movies, two days of watching movies or reading books. Um, that's it for uh, the basics of colon cancer screening. Please get screened. It is well worth doing. If you're normal, you don't have to go back again for a good interval, and it's well worth doing. Colon cancer can be prevented if we all uh, get assessed and screened. Bye-bye.